لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك Assalamu alaikum and I welcome you all to a special program of PTV World on this auspicious day of 10th of Zil Hajj and the program is about Hajj. Pilgrimage or Hajj which is the fifth pillar of Islam. Now if we talk about other religions as well we see that pilgrimage is an ancient practice and it has been practiced not only in Islam but also in the days before Islam. But today of course we'll be talking about the Hajj which is of Islam, the pillar of Islam, the fifth and most important pillar of Islam. Now um, before we start off with the discussion I'll introduce you to our panelists today. First of all, we have Dr. Aslam Khaki with us. Uh, Dr. Aslam Khaki is a jurist, he's a lecturer, professor, and author of several books. Dr. Sir, welcome to our program. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, our second panelist today is um, Dr. Taymiya Sabiha, and she is a scholar and also an assistant professor a, of Islamic studies. And welcome to the program. And our third panelist today is uh, Mr. Abdul Jalil. He's a scholar and a social analyst. Mr. Abdul Jalil, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. So, um, Doctor, first of all, we'd like to talk about the philosophy of Hajj, the basic philosophy of Hajj. People go there, they thronged to Makkah al Mukarramah every year we see from all parts of the world. Uh, for what? A, we know that we have to complete certain rites as the Islam teaches us, but not talking about the rights, we're talking about the main basic philosophy, which often we see that people tend to forget. How would you define that? Thank you very much. If we examine the ahkam of Islam, mm -hmm. they seem to be classified into main categories. One relate with haqqullah, that is the rights of the Allah, and the other relate to right of the people, right. which are popularly ca uh, called as haqqul ibad. Right. And just seeing the philosophy of all these ibadat, as we study, it comes to our knowledge that all these ibadat have been made obligatory, obligatory to regulate and improve our conduct in the society. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is called as taqwa, as Quran says, So that you become muttaki or a good Mubayas. character, I say that, that you yes. yani improve character or many dimensions are there. Same is with the uh, siyam, that is the fasting, that is all that, even in Qurbani, there is that. So Hajj institution have been made to universalize the humanity, not only the Muslims. It is obligatory not upon the Muslim, but upon all the mankind. As Quran says, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتَ مَنِسْتَطَعِ لَيْسِ That obligatory is from God Almighty upon the people. وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجْ Holy Abraham was just asked to make a call to the people for right. this Hajj, not to that. And that's why even this was obligatory before uh, the dawn of Islam. The Christian Jews and all the followers of Abraham, which are called the Abrahamic group, they all perform Hajj. So this Hajj is a universalization of the humanity. At our uh, ground level, we see that we unify ourselves in prayers, a mahalla, then Juma, a town, and yes, then Eid, exactly. the city at the larger scale. And then above that is the, all the people from even various beliefs, though other religions have left uh, this uh, Hajj for the reason best known to them. Mm -hmm. However, all the Muslims gather on one in you know, a that is called the Hajj. Right. And the main purpose is universalization, and universalization is based upon the diversity, a uh, unity within diversity. That is called pluralistic society in right. the modern terms, or many you know, uh, uh, terms can be attributed to that, but basic is universalization. And I say that it is also an opportunity for interfaith dialogue there, interfaith within sectarian faith, within other racial faith, or all that you can see that it is an opportunity to just dissolve our biases and prejudices of race, color, and all financial status, economic status, all these are dissolved when we just go and have a face towards Kaaba and we wear ihram. ihram That's yes. why the ihram is a uniform address, uh, address. And it is 
in the white color. What is the purpose of white? White is that it dissolves, it just contains all the colors. It reflects all the colors. Scientifically, the you colors. may know that it's in the physics, it is the composition of the seven colors. Right. As black is the sir, uh, uh, sir, absence uh, of all I'm the I'm colors. I'm really sorry to be interrupting yeah. you here, but we'll have to take a short break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs> Well, welcome back, viewers. We, we were talking about uh, Hajj and the main philosophy of Hajj and different aspects of the pilgrimage of Islam that is held every year. Now, we were talking about uh, to Dr. Aslam Khaki, who very beautifully put forward the main philosophy of Hajj. Now, uh, Dr. Thamia Sabiha is also with us. Uh, as the doctor was mentioning about the ihram and the, in the philosophy of equality in Hajj, as he said that it reflects all the colors, the white color of ihram. Uh, how would you comment on this? Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dr. Saab has mentioned many points uh, highlighting the philosophy of Hajj, and is specifically about ihram. My opinion about it, that it is a very, it symbolizes equality and humanitarian culture of Islam. That how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it obligatory for all men to wear a similar costume over there, and they portray and they perform different rituals in a similar manner. And there, all sorts of differences and discriminations are eliminated, and all people, they go and perform those rituals, be they are black and white, be they are rich or poor. So no socioeconomic differences occur there. And there is another aspect in the philosophy of Hajj, which I want to like uh, to highlight more, and that is the philosophy of following the legacy of uh, Prophet Abraham and his right. family. Because we see that this is the family of Abraham that God has made all people to follow the rituals performed by that family. And especially the mother Hajar and his son uh, and her son, that God made all the people to follow a woman, how she lived alone there. Abraham has left her in the valley of Makkah and then all alone, how she per managed with her, her only son over there, and how she walked and ran between the mountains Safa of and Safa and Marwa. Marwa. So God made all the people to follow those footsteps, to perform Sa'i over there and to perform Tawaf as the Hajar has go around the Kaaba, and then drinking the Zamzam and all the rituals. That family history goes with all that. And being a lady, I value it more, that all the men, from all the races, from all the countries, from all the continents, they follow the footsteps of Hajar. And I see a sublime example of motherhood in that, that how Hajar has trained her only son, how she raised her in the isolation of that valley, that Ismail, when he grew, grew up, and he was asked by Abraham, his father, that I want to sacrifice you for the mm -hmm. sake of God. So, what was the response of Ishmael? That was that he was surrendering himself that, okay, I'm ready. You perform what God has asked you to do. So that is what Iqbal has said, Sikhaye kisne Ismail ko adabe farzandi. So that is a unique example of the role of motherhood in that whole event. Right, that's, that, that's mm. very true. Now, um, like our two panelists said, uh, Mr. Jalil, I'd uh, come to you now. Uh, setting aside all biases, setting aside all socioeconomic differences and going for the main pilgrimage that is Hajj. But we do see the fact that uh, as you perform the pilgrimage, as you perform the Hajj, it's said that all your sins are washed away, right? But we do see in our society, we do not go far, that we, when people come back, they come back to their own, uh, the usual things that they do. People don't stop lying. People don't stop the deceit. People don't stop cheating. And even when you listen to uh, the main sermon of the Hajj on Yom Arafah, uh, all these things are there which are taught to the people. 
when and the pe people, people listen to that, right? But we don't see that actually happening. Uh, now, uh, why is that so? Actually, this is a good question as well, because if somebody goes on a Hajj, he must come back totally changed person. Right. Because Hajj is, in fact, is a one way of having Miraj alive, exception to Almighty God, where you must. And Almighty God has brought about a great symbolism. This is the revival of a great symbolism, you know, Hajj. It is based upon the revival, resurrection of the series of the symbolism. For example, the uh, <coughs> movement of Hazrat Hajra seven times between yes. those two points of the hills. Number one, number two, the appearance, sudden appearance of Zamzam. Thirdly, the construction of the Kaaba itself. Then the f sacrificial, uh, you know, the ritual of the sacrificial of Hazrat uh, Ismail Islam by Ahmed. and then stoning of the devil. Rami, yes. Yes, yes. where, <coughs> now these are all the rituals which Almighty, th these were all the rituals which have been performed by that great luminary, the Prophet himself, hmm. and uh, also the mother of the Prophet, Hadrat Hajra, Ravdiya, oh, So Almighty God wants us that all those noble traditions, tradition of the piety, tradition of the hu great humanity, tradition of the benevolence, it must not be killed, it should be improved with, you, you know, it should be kept alive and improved with your collaborative, collaborative effort, number one. Number two, Hajj has got another very great importance in the sense that it has to bring a social political unity among the different factions and the different community of the Muslim Ummah. Ummah concept is basically can be fully realized through the performance of that, where you are placed in a very trying circumstances. Mm. The Muslim from all over the world, from the different cultural, linguistic, racial background, they come here, you do not understand their la language. Yet, by gesture and by deed, you are required to be very uh, tolerant, very uh, kind and benevolent to it. And this attitude, you know, this attitude, uh, 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 in fact, as a if you if you go uh, th through the human psyche, this attitude brings about a lot of transformation uh, of the human character as well. And Almighty God wants you that whatever the new character of nobility or generosity you have developed, you must carry it on while you are <coughs> when when you go back in your respective personality. And thirdly, you must have noticed in that the, the basically Hajj is another great symbolism of the, uh, this is a, I mean, my, uh, Dr. Taiba knows it very well and she can explain it, Baitul Mamur, which has been mentioned in Quran as mm -hmm. well, that, that this is a place, this is a place of throne of Almighty God around which billions and billions of the angels, they revolve around it, or Tawaf. So, or this is the replication of that ritual which human beings are expected to perform on the earth. You know, this Hajj is a, is, it's, a, it's a kind of a, <coughs> it's a kind of a symbolism with by acting on it, Almighty God wants us to develop the, basically to develop and, re, to develop and reawake the traits of the, uh, traits of the divinity in yourself. You know, this is a, basically a onward, Travel. This is travel back to the to the to the nature of the divinity. As, as Quran says, "Lakat khalak al insan asana takwim." I have created human being with an ideal proportion. Yes. You know. So this that's the kind of a uh, that is kind of a psychic condition which you experience there. Because every moment, every believer, every Muslim is expected to act. With an ideal, you know, trait, with an ideal character, he is supposed to exhibit an ideal character while he is on the duty of the Hajj. Right. And it carries, and you know, it carries a tremendous reward as well. Quran has basically has given a clear indication that those who perform Hajj honestly and then they uh, continue to follow its spirit, they were certainly placed in the garden of the paradise. That's the spirit of Quran as well. Hajj carries a lot of provo then the obligation of the Hajj. Of course, it, it falls on those who can afford it as well. Yes. yes. But Hajj is a, it's, it's a extraordinary, unique symbolism which uh, uh, Almighty God, uh, uh, which Almighty God wants us to follow to change the destiny of the humanity as well. Exactly. So whenever, when, when these communities, all member of the community, when they go back and all they are back in their home in different continent, they must carry those own value system, those passions, those impressions. So this is a basically a onward, uh, this is what I would say that it built up a 
self perpetuating movement of unity of a spiritual revival and as well as what we can say anurul munkarani it help us to overcome all those evil which are you know which have cropped up in a different society so right. uh, so I, i i believe that personally hajj it is a movement of a spiritual purification Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Yes, uh, Doctor. Like uh, uh, Sir, very beautifully mentioned, it's uh, a process of spiritual um, purification, connecting to your inner self and connecting to the inner divinity that we have, and also the fact that there are so many hardships where pilgrimage is concerned, where Hajj is concerned. Yet, uh, we do we we do see a lot of pretentiousness in people, uh, not only in their acts but also uh, in their uh, inner selves. Now. Why is that so? Is it because <coughs> the Hajj has become very easy to perform now, uh, as compared to the olden days, or or any other reason that you see? Thank you. The question, just I take it forward, as you just discussed or just made a question that why our life is not linked with the training of Hajj. We come back after Hajj, just conceiving and perceiving that our sins are washed away, mm -hmm. and we start committing new sins, yes. so that to fill the bag, as it is said. but there are two points in it that the sins those sins are washed which do not relate to the rights of the people the hadith also says that it can wash the rights of the allah that if you didn't offer the prayers or just miss the fasting but as far as the rights of the people is concerned that would remain intact hajj cannot wash them number 1 number 2 those sins would be washed and th that conduct when you change your conduct and you become or you feel penitent and just commit with allah almighty that you would not repeat it in future right. the quran says ke inna matawbatu ala allah alladhina ya'maluna su'a bi jahalatin thumma yatubuna min qareeb that only that toba is accepted by allah almighty which comes out of your ignorant uh, conduct or ignorance and then you just prove it that you will not commit it in the future so the people do not know these two conditions that's why they say that we just wash away and then we do the thing rather they become more uh, i would say they become worse uh, human being worse trader worse merchant worse uh, bureaucrat than they were going before hajj i have many example to that but that will involve a too, too long time as far as the training is concerned we can see it, as we said the universalization equality of the mankind in many things as we said for the human development it must be conceived and it must be provided that the opportunities to all the people on equal level without racial territorial language even without religious biases so this hajj performance eliminates it and islam come for the equality of the mankind and taking the coffin that in white even uh, in ihram as white again when we are buried we take the white cloth and the right. same side without sewing because in sewing the design may come differentiation may come it's another dilemma uh, you can say irony that in hajj now hajj has been classified as three star hajj four star hajj exactly, five star exactly exactly i always say as a jurist consultant i am jurist consultant to federal shariat court which is a post more than a mufti so i always give that opinion that these hajj four star five star unless they are very old people or they are sick people that exemption can be done but we see that even in the tents there are a refrigerator the tents are air conditioned air conditioned and beside yes. them is a poor person so all that spirit of equality gets violated and washed exactly so this should not be the practice unless some persons are very sick or old and they need better care but they should not be classified like that so the spirit is equality as my sister said about that the quran says as far as the sa'i of hazrat haji the role of haji is very much important we know that she was a slave yes not a free as compared with sara yes there is a comparison she was not beautiful because slave people are usually not good looking sara was very beautiful and tall and with a gorgeous personality but she submitted haji submitted to will of god right and god blessed him her at many occasions she was just running from safa and marwa not for herself for oh, the, the rights of her child there is a lesson that you should go for the rights of the your child you should make efforts even on the cost of your own life 
as I say, that there is a lesson for the people. There is a lesson for the mothers who leave their suckling children and go with their ashana or with their friends away, leaving those children, or they are just neglecting the rearing of their children. There is a lesson from Hajra that how did she care about that? And then that's why God blessed her and asked all the people to come that you have to follow the sunnah of these women as we take in the society women as an inferior. How can exactly. we hear that women come superior to many people? Even if you say, you, you can see that even the prophets were made or they opted to follow the sunnah of Hajra, Hajir. And they also ran, without which you cannot complete your hajj. In the safa wal marwata min sha'airillah. So sha'air does not mean that it is only smid. Sha'air means beacon house. It is a lesson to change your conduct. It is a uswa hasana of a lady who submitted to the will of God Almighty at the risk of his own life and effort. So with that, then we come the Kaaba. And other event is just revolving around Kaaba. It's yeah. not only that is a ritual, rather it is a symbolic. Symbol is that, that in my life, I would make the wish and will of God as the center of my activities. Here is the tawaf. It is not just only making the rounds and mm -hmm. rounds and just making labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. It's not a ritual only, but it is a practice. It's an exercise, mental, psychological, physical, physical all yes. trainings are involved. So this is why when I went for Umrah, I just felt it. Because with this spirit, I went there. And I felt, yes, I'm getting closer to Allah Almighty. So this is what all the ritual, even the sacrifice, as we may talk later, yes. the qurbani, the word qurbani is from getting qareeb, aqrab, aqrab, that which brings you closer to Allah, uh, Allah, Almighty, Allah Almighty, or closer yeah. to your purposes of the life. So this, all that activities, and they are all the events of sacrifices. So all these sacrifices, they are the story of the sacrifices. And they just focus upon the trainings. Every ibadah is a training. Ibadah itself is not the purpose of Islam. These are instrumental, as we do B. Ed, M. Ed, as mm -hmm. the people go for the National Police Academy for the training in the army. All these trainings are not purpose itself. They are the goal our target is the goal behind that, so that they become good soldiers, so that they become good teacher. So it is the training. The people who take these events as rituals, ultimate or end product or end you can activity, they fail to achieve the taqwa. And that's why the difference, or you can say the gap between their conduct and the training. And they do any, any evil after just performing hajj, not only hajj, doing and after prayer, just uh, not controlling themselves, though observing the fastings during Ramzan. So they have not created, they do not. So, so the they, they uh, kind of take it at more, more like a physical exercise yeah, yeah, rather than mental or psychological yeah. or spiritual. Yeah, yeah. They say right. that ibadah for ibadah. No, it's ibadah for development, human development, my faculties. There are potential faculties in my body, in my mind. They come up with this training. The, there is a purpose of training. So here the assignment is with the preachers that they should tell the people that these ibadah are the training for you. I was just giving a lecture and I just uh, saw that in that lecture, I was supposed to be there at nine. I went at nine, but the teachers, female teachers were there. They were coming at 9.15, 9.30, 9.45 and mm -hmm. 10. I asked them, do you offer prayer? All they said, yeah. In time, we offer. Why don't you come in time in the class? Inna salat kaanat ala al-mu'minina kitab wa mawkuta. So this the regularity and punctuality of the time is the training of prayer. We offer prayer in time, but never go to any event or perform in that time, even yes. in time. You can say to the marriage ceremony, it is 7 p.m. You are called there, and that is taken at 11. So that is the visage of time. So we did not inculcate the values of those ibadat in our life. And on the other hand, I just I teach at uh, National Police Academy. Mm -hmm. There are young officers after CSS, they come there. They come at nine. When I enter the class, they are already there. It is part of their discipline. So I ask many of them that whether do you, uh, do you uh, perform uh, uh, this uh, prayer, offer prayer, very 
few of them are 50 percent, yes, in time we perform it, but they come in time. That why I, what I told those teachers who were coming late at the uh, university in one some seminar, I told them, they are not offering prayer, but they are regular. You are offering prayer, you are not taking that value of that. So same case is with the Hajj, is with the Qurbani, as we say that in Qurbani, that it brings you closer, closer to Allah, to Allah, Allah Almighty. Almighty. That, that's very correct. Now, uh, um, and Dr. Thamia, uh, talking about tolerance in society, of course, Hajj is supposed to have its uh, positive ramifications as well. And it teaches you tolerance, like Dr. Sa was mentioning. It is supposed to teach you a lot of things, and tolerance is one of them. But we see in today's society, in today's world, that tolerance is something that's really decreasing very sharply. How would you comment on that? The one thing which is very much marvelous in the whole ritual of Hajj is that it's based on equality, it's hmm. based on brotherhood, hmm. the concept of universal brotherhood is there. And the three things which are preventive in Hajj, they are fala rafata wala fusuqa wala jidal, that all sorts of immodesty, immorality, unrighteousness, unri uh, and the jidal, fighting each other, quarreling each other, selfishness, making yourself superior than the other ones, all these things are considered forbidden during the Hajj. If person performs Hajj with its true sense, so he should avoid them in his real life as well. And the unique thing in Hajj is that, unlike the other religions, where the height of spirituality or height of righteousness is, that leaving the world aside you and going into the monasteries, going into the caves or the tops of the mountains. And we see there are many um, archives around our Islamabad as well, mm -hmm. which we used to visit. And we feel a very deep contemplative experience over there where the Buddhist caves are situated or where the Hindu monasteries and the other things are situated. That is all that all religions want people to go and get closer to God and make a relationship which is very much unique between a person and God. So on that, all religions are doing that. But wha what is different in the ritual of Hajj is that it is not dissociating people from the society. All the rituals of Hajj are performed among millions and millions of people where they experience the how to tolerate each other, how to be patient on when some untoward situation is there. And if that lesson is carried in the real lives of people, as Dr. Sahib has mentioned, then it would be a great transformation, which is the very right purpose of Hajj, that it is a transformative experience for all the people, that the lessons which they learned in the ritual of Hajj, they should bring all those lessons to their own society. Hajj doesn't dissociate or us from our society. We perform salat or prayer, that is part of Hajj. That is for reminding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everyday life. The charity is part of Hajj, which is the purpose of zakat as well. Saum, the righteousness or taqwa is part of Hajj. The monetary expenditure which we, uh, we, we perform over there at the cost of, we pay many things over there, right. the trade and the things, all they are going over there. So if it is cum in cumulative in its nature, mm -hmm. so we can mm, take all that experience to increase and, a and, better And of course increase awareness yeah. in the rest of the society as well. Now, um, uh, sir, uh, talking about sacrifice, the philosophy behind sacrifice, is it only the monetary sacrifice that we're making, or is it also supposed to be the sacrifice of our own selves, our egos, and our pride as well? Uh, this is a very good question in the sense that uh, people, <coughs> I, I think those who proceed ahead, they must keep the premier, the important principal idea into their mind that the whole, all these you know, the worship system of Islam is to bring about a total transformation of a human per personality by developing or cultivating the trait of a taqwa in you, hmm. right? And there are four or five principles which Almighty God has very beautifully explained in Quran. And I think so if somebody, if somebody, by ignoring them, you will never be able to meet the requirement of the taqwa as well. Neither you can experience the, what we can say, the absolute station of uh, uh, divinity. 
which Iqbal have so much talked in reconstruction of religious thought in Islam. I mean, your relationship with Almighty God. Number in the law, you hibbul mosin in Almighty God, love those who deliver service to humanity selflessly. So the element of selflessness is very important. Uh, you know, it is the part of the taqwa, generosity. Right. Generosity is the part of the taqwa, and this is one of the feature of the. This is the one of the part of the attribute of Almighty God, part of the rububiyat, which Almighty God wants every person to exhibit through his uh, generous attitude, right. generosity. Then in the law, yuhibul, in the law yuhibul mosinin, in the law yuhibul mutawakkilin. Tawakkil is very important. A tawakkil is another great. I would say this is the basically a part of the. Part of the iman, or it is uh, when if you have got a faith in Islam, then you must observe tawakkul. Tawakkul means that if you got an opportunity, let's say you have got a power, you have got a wealth, but you are not misusing the the opportunity to get more power or hmm. to get, uh, you know, to using them for self enrichment out of the fear that you tomorrow if you don't have these. So you might go starve, you might go uh, Contentment poor. basically, yes. yes. So Almighty God wants you that if today I am helping you, tomorrow too, if you are deprived from this high office of a power, I will be there to help you as well. So tawakkal is a one manzal of iman. It's very, very important and it is the tawakkal. This is the manzal as Quran says, this is the tawakkal which brings about uh, lot of, uh, you know, which brings about uh, your co al contact with Almighty God through lot of miracles. Right. Miracles happen in the life. Suppose you have a 10 rupees, 10 mm. rupees may be sufficient to bring about the work which otherwise would require 1000 rupees. Mm -hmm. So this is happen. You know, this is how you command space and the time you do the work. That's, that's, that's very two, true. In the law, you hibbul, then the, this is what we say. In the law, yuhibbul mutawakkilin, in the law, yuhibbul sabirin, then patience is very important, almighty. Patience doesn't mean renouncing the effort. Patience means that you should act wisely, right? And you should not become desperate in your behavior. Whatever the circumstances Whatever the uh, yeah. desperation. Desperation always comes out of a ray, state of rage, outrageousness or out of a greed, lust, etc., etc. Hmm. So what I mean to say is that uh, uh, this is what I always feel, that those people who proceed in Hajj must be given in advance good training in this respect. Right. That you are proceeding it, it's a spiritual exercise, it is a... It's basically a moral exercise and it is a, you must educate yourself according to these new value. When you will interact with the new people, different people there of the different bang, background, you must exhibit Islamic trait of generosity there, right? And then you will be able to experience the beauty of the heart. So, you should be uh, an example yeah. to and the I think so people. that is something which is lacking in our system as well mm -hmm. those people who are and I I, I w would say that even the non-governmental organization should also come forward and they should come up with some kind of a agenda for the re for the education of those p uh, you know the hajis who, uh, who, who will be performing yes, hajj who would in be the going yes. for a hajj and right. in advantage now, and Mollam has also got the duty to you know they should <coughs> also accompany them and uh, from time to time explain them what they have experienced, what they are going to do. Right. Then the spirit of that sacrifice, you were talking about it. This is very important. Why Hazrat, uh, Hazrat, um, I mean, Hazrat Ibrahim led was Islam, he was asked Almighty God to sacrifice his own son in the name of Allah. The, the, the upshot or the essence of it is mm -hmm. that sometime, if you have to take a bitter action, if you have to take action against your will, Mm -hmm. But you feel that there is a goodness, there is real compliance with the will of God in the greater interest of humanity. You must go ahead. You do it for God. You do you, it for yeah, Allah. Yes. You God. must go ahead. Right? That is beside the point that how the Almighty God will accommodate your sacrifice mm -hmm. and how will he be respond. So this is, the, the, there are trying circumstances in every human life and we come up with most of the compromises. But this is what Almighty God said, that if you are a pious, you have to see, sometimes you will have to take strict action against corrupt element, against exactly. bad element. You exactly. will have to sentence them, even to the death. So don't be afraid of it. If you have got link with them, sever your link with them. This is against the taqwa. So right. basically, this is a movement of, the, uh, you know, a great, I would say, a great movement of ethic and morality, this Hajj. It built up a movement. And we should try to preserve all, we should try to preserve all its lesson through our, you know, 
to conduct uh, through our change, our personality through our change, change in our personality and character. Yes, that's yeah. very true. <coughs> yeah, yes, please. Okay, my respected fellow has mentioned about the training of Hujjaj and also the post Hajj trainings for them and reminders for them. So it made me to recall that what we are performing in our institution is that as the number of Hajis or Hujjaj is growing in Pakistan, mm -hmm. so we have started this initiative in our university to train them about the rituals, about the philosophy of Aj, Hajj and how their, these rituals are associated with their, their life and their skills and what do they act in their uh, daily right. routines. Right. So we have a specific department who prepare the Hajj trainers and then the master trainers from all across the Pakistan and it's especially for female because in female campus we do approach female and a mm -hmm. good number of thousands of ladies were trained there in our university. I see. And we also conduct the post Hajj workshops for them that in order to remind and recall the lessons which they learned in which the they learned during the yeah, Hajj. Yes. And make them part <coughs> of their life and the well, that, continuous workshops and you can say the reminders <laughs> or circles are being arranged in order to stay connected with that spirit and philosophy yes, of Hajj. That's, that's a beautiful... So uh, I don't say that it's sufficient and I also know that many uh, NGOs and the other people who arrange for the tours and the Hajj operation, they are also involved in that. But at least it is there and I appreciate the it's effort. It's a brilliant which initiative, which I must say, say yes. Yeah. I, must, I, I, I would say that we must use this opportunity to convey this idea to most of the people who intend to perform arts. Right uh, absolutely. Uh, this is <coughs> really it is very important it's indeed. Very important. Now, uh, sir, coming to you, Dr. Uh, Fakr, taqwa, and increasing and purifying the spirituality that's within yourself, and Hajj gives you the opportunity uh, for that too. Could you, uh, for us and the viewers, define these terms and also explain how to do that? As far as these terms are concerned, these are used very arbitrarily mm. in fiqh or even in tasawwuf. When we say that spiritual development, then spiritual development is our vision towards life, changing your mindset. Right. It's not like in tasawwuf, just secluding and just linking with the God in the vacuum. It's with your life. That's why in, even in Hajj, when Quran says that the Abraham should call the people to this Kaaba, mm -hmm. he said that so that the people see the bounties of God Almighty, right. the proofs, and that is the bounty that how can they better develop in a society which is based upon merit, based upon equality of mankind, and free from prejudices of race, color, and gender. Right. As we say that the Hajir, that is the proof that the gen there is no gender uh, discrimination in Islam. Even that Hajj, so what is that sign? What the people should observe? That if you just put down your dregs, uh, daggers, as it was just decided, Fala Rafasa Wala Fasuqa Wala Dida la Fil Hajj, mm -hmm. there will be no molestation, no nuisance, no fighting during Hajj. Yeah. Even the Muslims were uh, yani prohibited from taking any action or quarrel against the non-Muslim during Qaital, even if they enter Kaaba or if right. they are in the Hudud of Haram in these days. So that is that how to develop a peaceful society to live peaceful co for a peaceful coexistence. Co exactly. Because due to the urbanization and migration among the people, from villages to cities, from cities to other countries, where the people are forced to live face to face, side by side, for their employment, for their better facilities. So pluralism or this attitude of peaceful coexistence is very much necessary. So right. when we go for Hajj, and that is a good custom even in our society, we go to our relative and ask them to forgive us Forgiveness, if we have it. Exactly. So this is the it's spirit of Allah, Rafa Sawala, and even there. Then comes the Qurbani. Qurbani is a sharing and caring event that you take a sheep or a goat and then the meat is divided into three parts. Have right. you ever understood the spirit there or the philosophy? One is for myself, as the Holy Prophet said, Wali nafsika alayka haqqun, wali zawjika alayka haqqun, wali awladika alayka haqqun. That you have the right upon yourself. Or and again, Quran says that you have to please yourself, your family, and all that. So one part of the meat, you should enjoy it, barbecue, just having pulao, biryani, and all that at your home. 
if there are 30 kilos, you can take 10 kilos. 10 right. kilos is for your friends. This is sharing. They will send you, you will send them. It would also balance them. And yani caring yourself, sharing, and then again caring for the poor people for because the poor they people. can't send you back. That is the caring. So this sharing and caring, which are the terms of the modern times, mm -hmm. were practically inculcated in the uh, uh, ibadat and in the society of Islam. You should be caring. So I disagree with the people who send the money to the other people, though they are their refugees and all that. You can send the cash. But as far as this qurban is concerned, it is the right of your family, right of the poor around you, right of your friends. You can't take away their right. Right. However, if you have three goats, you can send one. Otherwise, such qurbani, I give it on you know, my commitment, on my knowledge, not just a past remark, that such qurbanis would not be accepted, would not just deprive them or would not absolve them of the responsibility of qurbani if you not practically just slaughter there. Right. Until unless there is cogent reason as there, even you can see in the hajj, though there is excessive amount or number of the goats and the camels, yet animals. the performance is there. Then you can send the uh, meat to all with it. So you should just make a qurbani here, just enjoy with your friends, because that would take friendship. If I send them uh, meat or the <coughs> all that uh, qurbani to the other people and don't share it with my friend, how would I go for it? It is an opportunity that I just go to my friend bring the meat with uh, me and give him. He comes with the same. This is the sharing, socialization, and it also dissolves the enmity or ill wills between the friends or exactly. among the relatives. Exactly, it's an opportunity So this is an opportunity, yes. so it should be engaged. Yeah, so absolutely. this is the, uh, you can say the concept, and different varieties of concepts, variety of training in one Hajj and Qurbani, which is the one of the part of the Hajj. Oh, so we should exactly. just implement it in our, life, not only implanted, rather I would say implanted in our life, not only spiritual, physical. You can say that the, uh, another aspect of Hajj is that usually we are just lazy in our life, not working hard, only be the labor are working hard. But the Hajj is mostly for the rich people. They are very mm -hmm. much just sitting in their shops or you know, I am sitting in the table or that. Hajj is a physical exertion exercise. That too, yes. As we say, the exertion, uh, exertion test as for the heart there is the ex It is your exertion test. You have to be very active, like a mujahid. So it is the activity which also dissolves your many, you can say, unnecessary or unwanted fats in my body. Hmm. It just relaxes or just develops my muscles. Exactly. It is a gym more than. So it is a spiritual as well as physical training of Islam universalization of the humanity to develop a peaceful coexistence uh, system in the society so that the people become one ummate wahida quran even says that all the followers of the faith followers are one unity in the hazihi ummatukum ummatum wahida all you the christian jews and all you people following the various different prophets are one ummat ummate wahida ana rabbukum fa'budun I am your Lord. I am the common among all of you. So Hajj is a system in which we see that God is the common. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I must thank all of you as we've run out of time, unfortunately. Dr. Aslam Khaki, thank you very thank much, you very much uh, for, for being with us you. today. Uh, Dr. Uh, Damia Sabiha, thank you very much for your views and for coming here. And Mr. Abdul Jalil, thank you very much for giving, uh, giving us your views. Today's program was uh, basically on Hajj, the philosophy of Hajj and what it teaches us and what should be there in the society after we've performed Hajj. Society at large and specifically in our families, in our family systems, in the constitutions of our houses. And that, like our panelists very beautifully mentioned, they're supposed to train us physically, emotionally and psychologically and spiritually, of course. Purification in all aspects of life, that's what Hajj is all about. And let's hope that this time, this Hajj onwards, we develop that uh, patience in ourselves, that tolerance in ourselves, and the basic spirit should be inculcated in ourselves and all the people who've gone there to perform Hajj. And of course, as we listen to the uh, khutbah, the sermon of the Yom Arafah, of course, is translated into all the languages. And uh, let's pray to the Almighty that may we be able to follow that in its true letter and spirit. Thank you very much for being with us. Jazakumullah. لبيك اللهم لبيك
لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك